In this video, we're going to watch a short clip of American physicist engineer Arthur Eberhall discussing his descriptions of humans defined as abstract atomisms. Eberhall is noted for his human thermodynamics theory of self-organizing systems that he developed between 1977 until his passing in 2002. To give a bit of introduction, Eberhall was an American physics professor who taught a course on the thermodynamics of living systems and human systems to chemical engineering students. Subsequently, in a scheme of logic, when one begins to view humans and human systems abstractly from a distant physics or chemical point of view, it is interesting to see what type of terminology the theorist arrives at. A few examples include the 1948 book, We Human Chemicals, by American self-defined human chemist, Thomas Dreer, the 2002 book, Little Fun Book of Molecules Humans, by John Hodge, the 2007 book, The Social Atom, by Mark Buchanan, and of course the 2008 book, The Human Molecule, by myself, which gives a 5,000 year historical overview of every theory to have come along to define humans abstractly as a type of atom. In the following clip, Eberall will be using the term atomism to define humans viewed as generalized atoms or as human atomic particles contained within a system, which he calls an ensemble, demarcated by a boundary. Atomisms, or unit atomisms, these are, these are atomistic-like entities, which is small and relatively common among each other, okay, among each other. And these are engaged in interactions, which means in the simplest form that they're basically colliding with each other because they, there are things bringing them together and pushing them apart. So they're constantly involved in that kind of a game. All right? And since this game is going on through the entire group of such atomisms, they thereby, they thereby constitute a collective, a collective or a near continuum of all of these players. And that somehow, by however that game is limited from the outside, will constitute the system. The system will have many interacting parts which perform certain, for certain continued forms and functions and they are bounded from below. Below they are, they are constituted by the atomisms. Above they are constituted by whatever bounds the collective. Okay? If it is if it's all completely self-contained, the same forces which are involved in creating the atomisms also represent the bounds. And so you have a continued process of this sort going together with something bounding and pulling them together. Okay? So that's the, that that shows fundamentally the nature of the micro, that is the small at the animistic level, and the macro, which is the collective. See, so as you see immediately in any system, there is no way that you can avoid at least having two levels. You'll have a micro level of atomisms and a macro level of the collective. Okay? At a next level, that macro level of the collective may be a micro level for a next level system. At the same time, not only might, but will be, except at the same time, the micro level of the atomism in its interior is itself likely to be a collective of things at a still smaller level. So this goes, this goes from what I just depicted as its geometry, but also its physics. See, it goes level by level, which expands as one goes out. Okay. So ordinarily, what is studied physically at any one level, like commonly you would call flatland physics, see, is a bunch of atomistic-like units, atomisms, okay, bound into a collective. 